Um, David, I want to talk about immigration as well and Tony Blair in a minute or two, but let's focus on the BBC first because a lot of people will feel oh. that actually the BBC is a diverse enough. What do you think? David, are you there? We got David? Oh, I think he's frozen. Um, right, let's see if we can maybe take a take a caller, perhaps. We can get someone on the air. I'm not sure why David Mal Malik's is frozen. They're not his fault, I'm sure. Sometimes they're just gremlins in the system. We've all been on those Zoom calls where uh, there's some sort of issue or uh, something freezes. Oh, David's back. David, um, I wonder if you heard my question there. I was just asking about the BBC and the diversity uh, row. Tell us what you think on that. Well, I mean, it's, uh, it's going to be more red meat for their critics, I'm afraid. Uh, the, 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 there's a... Uh, uh, been a constant chuntering about the BBC being more uh, interested in diversity than there is they are about their product or uh, about uh, quality these days. I mean, you know, it's it's to be fair, you know, the BBC is in the 21st century. It's trying to keep up with the times. It's trying to be more reflective of society. But you know, sometimes it does seem to be massively distracted and. You know, this is going to cost jobs, and uh, that's never a good thing, frankly. Well, one thing I always think about the BBC, and actually a lot of different organisations, is about class, uh, because nearly half of British people consider themselves working class. I mean, some of them aren't. Some of them say I'm working class, and they absolutely are not. Uh, but a third of people think of themselves as middle class, only 1% think they're upper class. I wonder if 49% of people who work for the BBC are actually working class, because race is one thing. Uh, having you know disabled people or people from uh, the gay community or LGBTQ plus question mark ampersand whatever it's called these days um, you know fair enough that's fine um, but I don't think they should be hiring people on that basis. No, I agree with you, and, I, and that's my big problem with the whole diversity drive, uh, drive the whole DEI uh, business is is it it seems to be another way of favouring the middle classes essentially over the working classes, and uh, you know if we look at the way opportunity exists in this country. It's it's narrowing a lot for people at the bottom of the scale. And, uh, you know, I'm, I'm afraid organisations like the BBC are part of that, but it's not only the BBC, it's, it's you know, it's corporate. It's a corporate world altogether, yeah. uh, I'm afraid. OK, uh, let me talk, uh, let's talk about Tony Blair now. He's said quite a number of things in the last few days. He's talked about immigration. He's talked about plans to allow young Europeans to come and live and work in Britain as well. Uh, he's been interviewed by a number of people. Uh, what has he been saying in the last few days? Well, I mean, he's been having a go at Brexit and the, the impact on immigration. You know, he's suggesting that we've uh, swapped young Europeans for older non-Europeans. Uh, there's a lot of truth in that, although he does seem to have ignored the fact that, uh, as do a lot of the critics of the immigration numbers, that a lot of that was uh, on a result of us taking in refugees from the Ukraine war and, uh, and from Hong Kong. Uh, I would always argue that we had a moral duty to take people from Hong Kong, uh, given what China is doing to that. Um, you know, it's... Uh, and now Blair's uh, uh, back on back on the EU front uh, with the youth mobility scheme as well. Yes, indeed. Just tell us a little bit about that, because he has been, of course, in Germany. He's been talking to the French president, Macron, and actually we've seen developments there as well with Michel Barnier, the sort of bogeyman of Brexit, who is now <laughs> the French prime minister. I do wonder if uh, Keir Starmer's getting to get the reforms he wants on the Brexit deal with, uh, with Barnier. Back on the scene, he's not very keen on. Tell you something, David. I was I worked in government during that that time, and we <laughs> we went. I was in the Northern Ireland office, and we went to Brussels, and I sat at the you know the, the glass table, the famous yeah, glass table. Yeah, I sat yeah. at the glass table and was part of a negotiation with Barnier, and he was. Uh, I'm afraid he 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 certainly uh, kept some of the French stereotypical traditions about being arrogant and dismissive very much alive. Yeah, I'm Problem we've got, uh, we're very pro EU at the Independent, uh, completely different to my previous employers at the Express. But I um, mean, the problem we got is what does Stammer want? Yeah. On the, does does uh, he know? What does he actually want? Yeah. Uh, what, do you, uh, what do you think he wants? <laughs> I think he wants to uh, make it easier to trade and for us to easier to travel. But he seems to be turning down every compromise. 
on that front, not least the Youth Mobility Scheme, which, of course, Blair supports, as we were saying. And Blair has also said in one of these interviews, the government will want to feel its way. We do need to fix the European relation because I think in the future, Tony Blair has said, Britain's got to be part of the political relationship on its own continent. Um, I mean, that, that's basically talking about rejoining the EU to me. Yeah, I, I think Blair wants that. But I mean, and, and, and I think it's quite clear he sees a world of, of competing giant powers. He sees uh, India, he sees China, he sees the United States. And uh, he doesn't think that France, Britain, Germany, Italy, as, you know, as big and great as they are, uh, can compete on their own and it needs to be a European bloc. And um, that's always been his argument. Yeah. And, you know, it's one of the stronger arguments actually for, for not accepting Brexit.